hey, nobody's perfect. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 bad games by good developers. I need you to be my eyes in there. Report back anything you see so I know what I'm up against. For this list, we're looking at video games from development houses who are traditionally recognized for producing some top-notch gaming experiences, but for whatever reason, released the following games which were well below their status quo. This is not to be confused with bad games from good publishers. So while Surfing H30 may have Rockstar's logo on the cover, they didn't build the game, so they dodged a bullet there. Wipeout! Number 10, Haze. Free Radical Design. Feeling good, buddy? You look psyched, hell, you look so good, I wish I was you. It's gonna be a fun day. Getting our list off to a shaky start is this first-person shooter from the former Rare team that brought you the Time Splitter series. In this game, you control a soldier named Shane Carpenter, who works for a corporation named Mantle in a dystopian future setting, as they fight off a resistance group named the Promised Hand. Crazy stuff happening out there in Boa. Ethnic cleansing, skinning people. It's crazy. Before release, Haze was hyped up to be a Halo killer, and even to provide an anti-war message in the same vein as the film Apocalypse Now. It failed to meet any and all of these expectations, as the game was panned for a short campaign, terrible graphics, and an abundance of glitches. So, you gotta take them down before they can pick it up. Boosh! Number 9, Whiplash, Crystal Dynamics. Next up on our list is this third-person action platformer from the same guys who rocked the PlayStation 1 and 2 with their Legacy of Kane and Tomb Raider franchises. With such a strong body of work under their belt, how could they possibly screw this one up? Well, the game itself isn't entirely terrible per se, just compared to what they've done in the past, it's undoubtedly a step down with ho-hum graphics and average platforming sequences. It also doesn't help that the game sparked controversy and furthermore a large amount of backlash for its cartoony and goofy depictions of animal cruelty and lab testing. We here at Genron overlooked their lack of previous job experience and put them to work in our factory, testing the latest in our amazing line of products. Number 8, Minority Report. Everybody runs. Treyarch. Loosely based on the hit film of the same name, this action beat-em-up doesn't quite live up to the thrills provided in the movie. Once again, the game as a whole isn't all that bad. However, it's so painfully mediocre that we wish that Tom Cruise had halted this game development before it had ever happened. Seriously, these are the same guys who brought us the Call of Duty Black Ops series, not to mention Spider-Man 2, one of the best movie-to-game adaptations ever, and all they could come up with was a run-of-the-mill beat-em-up? Everybody runs, alright. Far away from this one. Barry, give the man his hat. Number 7, The Legend of Korra, Platinum Games. The Avatar and Legend of Korra television series show characters who are able to bend the elements to their will, a concept that would seemingly provide excellent opportunities for great video games. With such action-packed potential, who better to take the reins of such a project than the masters of over-the-top insanity, Platinum Games? Responsible for some of the most high-octane joyrides in gaming, with such hits as Bayonetta and Metal Gear Rising, pairing The Legend of Korra with this developer seemed like a match made in heaven. But hey, dreams don't always come true, as we were instead given dull combat and a non-existent storyline. At least it was short. It's over, Hoondoon. Crawl back into whatever spirity swamp you've been festering in for the last millennium, and I won't be forced to destroy you. Number 6, Jurassic Park The Game, Telltale Games. At least one year before their magnum opus adaptation of The Walking Dead, Telltale hadn't quite hit its stride when this game hit the market, as it received a bevy of average reviews upon release. Don't worry about it, Plan B is ready. I have Plan B right here. Frequent criticisms of the game are the cast of uninteresting characters, generally boring story structure, as well as some rather unintentionally hilarious death scenes. Whether it's an Ice Age, Meteor, or UFOs, we doubt anyone would miss this one if it were to go extinct from our game libraries. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Number 5, Urban Champion, Nintendo R&D 1. Are you a fan of senseless button mashing, mind-numbingly mundane gameplay, and objectives so simplistic that you can practically beat the game with your eyes closed? If so, your friends are hopefully organizing some sort of gaming intervention to get you on a steady diet of Zelda and Mario's. 
However, for the true gaming masochists out there, Urban Champion is the perfect gaming experience for you! A fighting game in its most primitive of forms, the only goal is to knock back your opponent until they fall into an open sewer manhole. And it's about as much fun as it looks. Number 4. Shrek. Dice. Somebody once told me this game was gonna bore me, and you don't need to be the sharpest tool in the shed to see why. Released one year before they found breakout success with Battlefield 1942, something clearly went wrong with the development of this game based on the incredibly successful film of the same name. Well, you know what I like about you, Shrek? You got that kind of, I don't care what nobody thinks of me thing. I like that, I respect that, Shrek. You all right. The only layers to this game are just mediocrity covering bad, which continues to cover downright horrendous. Poor level design, boring objectives, and a Shrek walking animation that is both bonkers to watch and difficult to control. You'd be better off playing the Shrek Slenderman simulator. <laughs> Number 3. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Rareware. Who framed Roger Rabbit? No, no. The better and more important question is how a game so disastrous could even come into fruition. What's all the more puzzling is how this game was developed by the company that would go on to dominate the Super Nintendo and N64 era with its critical and commercial hits like GoldenEye, Banjo-Kazooie, and the Donkey Kong Country series. Until those classics were created, gamers would have to enjoy the awful controls, infuriating driving mechanics, and lack of clarity on what the heck you're supposed to do in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Video games based on movies are often terrible, and this might just be where that trend started. Number 2. Way of the Warrior, Naughty Dog Greatness from small beginnings. This is a line from Uncharted 3, one of the game company's most widely praised and beloved works. How ironic. Ooh, how ironic indeed. <laughs> Boasting absolutely no greatness from this company's small beginnings, Way of the Warrior is a shallow and mindless fighting game that takes one too many cues from another combat-centric brawler with a bunch of, ahem, <clears throat> mortals. Combat? Mortals? It's a shameless Mortal Kombat clone if you aren't following along, and a poor man's version of said series in every aspect of its design. Clunky combat, bad graphics, and a very distracting white zombie soundtrack. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Ah, the montage scene where Bigfoot gets the girls' soccer team to dance. I smell script page around here somewhere. Minimap, do your stuff. Number 1. Steel Battalion Heavy Armor from Software From Software is a big name in the industry for having created the punishingly difficult Soul series. However, the only thing harder than those games is how hard you'll need to think to imagine how it's possible for such a fantastic developer to release this stinker. Nice to get a little sun for a change. Nah, nah, he likes it down in the dark. Reminds him of the shittles he plays down in the bayou. Encompassing the Kinect motion sensor, this simulation game attempted to make you feel like you were in control of a large mech. But yeah, that didn't happen. What plagues this game more than anything is how it's virtually unplayable due to the broken motion controls. We already gave this game the title of worst video game reboot and the eighth worst game of all time. We assume it likes the negative attention. Target destroyed! Woo! This is real good! Do you agree with our list? Hope you like that track as much as I did. When did you think your favorite video game developers lost their mojo? Huh, <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. For more successful top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Hey, can I get you a pillow or something, partner? You gonna stay away from this mission or what?